All right. What's up, guys? It's Anthony from AB Fitness Center here, and today we got another jam-packed episode for you guys. We got on here one of my other super duper clients this is john here i got him here with john john has achieved phenomenal success with us john actually has two transformations so when john had come to me he wanted to gain some muscle you know typical meathead you know he wanted to gain some muscle put on some size um and we did just that and then when it was time we felt like it was time to die it down and he actually died down and got completely ripped and retained all that muscle so john is actually one of the clients who has two transformations with us and we're actually currently working on a third one but uh, i want to introduce john puna so what's up johnny how you doing buddy not much how are you doing good man good I, i'm excited to have you on and talk about your journey because i think it's going to help a lot of people you know you've achieved so much success within the year that you've been working with us over a year now and uh you're just super proud of you so i'm just excited to talk to you and hey, let everyone hear your story Oh, thank you. I'm glad to share it. But first, I think you should let everybody know you're really good at Photoshop before uh, you post those pictures. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's exactly what we did. We Photoshopped the muscles on John. You know, it's so funny because I, I look at your pictures a lot because they're up in the gym. And it's like whenever I point, like I'm talking to someone and I use your pictures, I'm like, I don't remember him being that tiny. I just, I don't, I just like, it doesn't make, it doesn't like comprehend in my mind. So let's let everyone know from your mouth kind of like, your experience with fitness. Um, talk about before us, pre-AB fitness time. Let's yeah, so my that. whole life I was into sports and doing physical activities, working out, lifting. I was always on the lighter end of the spectrum and struggled to put on weight, especially muscle mass. Um, so I was always pretty skinny. Uh, I would play baseball. I wrestled for a year or two. So I would do those types of exercise, whatever the coaches' programs were for those sports. And then once baseball was over, I decided to try my hand at CrossFit. Uh, it seemed to be the popular trend at the time. Everybody was talking about it. Everybody was doing it. People were claiming they were seeing great results in terms of endurance, muscle, et cetera. Um, so I started doing that. Um, I was seeing results, but it was more of losing weight. Um, so I was basically looking skinnier, not necessarily more muscular or more defined. Um, my cardio was obviously pretty good because of how high intense the cardio sessions are. But everything else, I felt like I was pretty weak, burnt out. Um, and tired doing it. Uh, so I knew there had to have been a better way, a more efficient way to start adding muscle, um, not working as hard, working smarter instead of harder, and just get the overall foundations. Um, another thing I never had prior to you guys was nutritional advice. So my nutritional program was kind of eat whatever I wanted. So if I was hungry, I ate whatever snacks I wanted, I snacked on. So I never knew if I was having enough calories, enough protein, or where my macros even should have been, nor was I counting any macros. So I had two shoulder surgeries, so I couldn't work out for about a year or so. Uh, then uh, I promised myself that once I came back, I would try to get a trainer, get my strength back, add some muscle, and uh, try to get back into the groove of things, as well as follow a nutritional program for the first time. So that's when I contacted you. Yeah, and I think that that's something else that I, I completely just kind of went over right over my head there. Like, the shoulder surgeries. I mean, we didn't even discuss that. That was like part of it. And most people use that stuff as like, ah, you know, I had shoulder surgery. I'm done. I can't do this anymore. And John came to me with the total opposite attitude of that. He's like, you know, I got to get this done. I want to get as strong as possible. And, you know, I remember when you first came, your shoulder was so weak and compared to what it is now, it's just, it's amazing the transformation, but how long have you, were you doing CrossFit for before you ended up uh, hurting your shoulder and having the two soldiers, shoulder surgeries? I would say on and off for probably a good two, three years or so. Uh, definitely before my shoulder surgery, I was doing CrossFit pretty much. Uh, it was a few times a week for almost a full year. Um, then prior to that, I was just kind of on and off. Uh, what well, the problem with CrossFit was it was hard to just maintain and stick with because you felt like you were burning out so much that either an injury would set in or your just body was so tired that you just decided to kind of give it up for a few months. Um, so it didn't seem like it was something that was totally sustainable, um, which is one of the big issues that I was having with CrossFit. Right. And being a working professional like yourself, it's hard to find that time to kind of get in there anyway, right? Yeah, exactly. The workouts obviously were relatively intense. Uh, they were probably 45 minutes to an hour long, but it was multiple times a week. And uh, like I said, I wasn't necessarily seeing the results I wanted to see. So I was trying to up it to even more times a week. And 
it became almost like a five, six day a week type thing. And it just wasn't sustainable in the long run in terms of muscle soreness, fatigue, and just being burnt out. And again, when you don't see the results as quickly as you want to, you become demoralized a little bit. And uh, then you decide, you know what, I'm going to sit this out for a few months and then maybe I'll go back to it. All right. So now your shoulder's injured. You come back from that. You say, okay, I'm going to look for a trainer. So how did you find us? And how did you how did you luck out and come across this jabroni on the other side of the screen? <laughs> it was a scam fishing scam. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I decided to Google search uh, physical uh, personal trainers in the area, uh, as well as nutritionists. And when I typed in personal trainer and nutritionist, you were one of the top hits on the uh, on the search engine. I clicked on your link. I was reading your bio and uh, watching the videos and all your summaries and whatnot. Um, and I decided to give you a call because it was exactly what I was looking for. Uh, a lot of other trainers, it was either you get the personal training or the nutritionist. You don't get either or. So what I liked about you is you get both in that package. Right. And the nutrition is everything. You know, we talk about this all the time. 70% of your results are going to come from what you eat. So, you know, we're, we're going to talk about the things that made you successful and the nutrition separate. So um, I just want to talk about your level of just commitment to things. And I think that that sets is what sets you apart. And that's why you actually have two transformations because John had come to me with his mind in the right place. You know, he came and he said, okay, I'm going to do this. And he just executed on the plan. There wasn't anything magical that we did. You know, he worked out with weights and he ate higher protein than he was eating before. We monitored his calories and he got results just following through. But I think that, the thing that made you so successful was just you executing on whatever I gave you. So let's talk about the first meeting that we have, we had, and your feelings on walking out from there. Did you feel confident in everything? Like talk about that first experience. So you came, you decided to call me, you called me. What happened next? Yeah, so you set up an appointment the day that I contacted you. I sent you an email. You probably called me within the first hour after sending the email. Um, I think we met that like two days later. Um, at the time, it wasn't at the gym, it was at your garage. So I met you at your garage uh, where you had everything set up. Uh, we spoke for probably 45 minutes or an hour. Uh, you took all my body measurements, weight, uh, all those things. So then you just sat down, you wanted to talk to me about my goals, uh, what I ate on an average day, how many calories I was intaking. And then from there, you just uh, told me what the plan was. So you said to, in, to start off, just do once a week, that would be sufficient enough. Um, and then you set my macro goals and all those things. Uh, so when I left, I felt pretty good about everything. You're very thorough. You seem to care, pay attention to everything that was going on. And then you definitely set a game plan to, in action. Uh, and then right away, we could start. So I love the fact that I didn't have to wait a few weeks out or a month out. I could start right away with the meal plan and start seeing results right away. So you were coming from now. So, so from what I'm hearing, so, you know, you did CrossFit five, six days a week. And then you hurt your shoulder, you take a break from that, and you want to get started, and you find this jabroni in his garage, and he's like, all right, John, you know, in order to gain size, you got to come once a week. What, what did you, did you like, did you like say, like, is this guy out of his mind? Like, because no one, you know, you read online, everything is like, oh, you got to dedicate hours to this. And I'm telling you, no, 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 only a half hour once a week. You know, <laughs> what was going through your mind at that point? And no, honestly, it kind of put me at ease a little bit because uh, I just found you on Google. So I really didn't know That's you from lying. anybody else. So <laughs> still lie, man. You don't have to lie. <laughs> <laughs> so when I saw you said one time a week, I said, all right, here's the guy who's not trying to scam me out of my money. If he was trying to scam me out of my money, he's going to tell me you need to come six, seven days a week. You need to come twice a day. You need, uh, you need to do all this. And uh, you were telling me, no, no, we don't start off with three times a week. We start off at one time a week. We take it in slow. Uh, it was almost a little frustrating, actually, because I was almost begging you at one point, can we please do two, three times a week? And you were saying, no, we'll stick with the one. But it definitely helped put me at ease that you're not about the money. You just want to care about your clients, you care about the results and uh, their, their well-being. All right. So now John comes to me, you know, he says he wants to gain muscle. And, you know, I put together a plan for him. So now I send you the plan. You get the plan. Talk about your experience now. Out now is really why I want to talk about what you did before with nutrition versus what what you did now, and we'll start there, and then we'll go into it more. Yeah. So you sent me that plan. Uh, it took me a while to read through that packet, but I was pretty thorough with reading. Like you, like I was telling you before. Before that, I never tracked calories. I never tracked any macros. If I was hungry and something was in the pantry, I ate it. I didn't care. If I saw ice cream in the fridge, I pull in the freezer. I just pull it out, start eating it. Not 
taking into consideration how big the portion size is, is what type of ice cream I'm eating, and the fat content, protein, none of that. Um, never Rocky Road or vanilla. <laughs> Dairy Queen. <laughs> no. uh, protein, I never really tracked my protein. Even when I was working out a lot, I knew protein was good to have. I had protein powder and I did take a scoop here or there, but I really had no rhyme or reason of when I was taking it or how much to take or anything like that. Um, so when you sent me that meal plan, I was real interested in learning exactly what the science is behind it, how many calories I should be having and what they should really comprise of. Um, like you had said before, 70% of your results are through your nutrition. So you're only in the gym. In my case, I was in the gym an hour and a half a week, three times a week for a half hour. It's what you do outside of the gym where you're seeing those results from. So it's more important for me at the time to read through those nutrition info that you gave me than anything else to make sure that I'm going to maximize my results in the off time. Yeah. And, um, you know, one of the things, and I think it's good to talk about this. So John had came to me and he wanted to gain weight, right? Which is not typical for most people who might be listening to this. But the fact is that John wanted to change his body. And that, that really doesn't change. What changes is the amount of calories that someone would take in. So now in John's case, we want to put on lean mass, which in most people's cases is what we want to do also because the more lean mass you have, the more calories you're going to burn at rest. So in John's case, when we actually first, you know, I gave him his nutritional plan, I grossly underestimated how many calories he was eating and consuming. I thought he was consuming a lot, a lot less. And uh, it turns out he, I mean, a lot more. And he turns out he was consuming a lot less. So the first couple of weeks on the program, he was actually putting on fat. It was yeah, actually it was... pretty funny. I, I, you know, I, like you said, you know, every person's different. And when they have, when, you know, people come to me, they have no idea what they're eating. It's really, really hard to design something when you're basically guessing on what someone's, you know, calorie intake is when they first start. So in John's case, uh, we actually we started with a certain amount of calories and he was actually putting on too much weight too fast. And I said, whoa, John, we got to slow this down. We want you to gain good quality weight, but we don't want you to put on body fat. And uh, of course, when you try to gain muscle, you're going to put on some fat with it too, but you want that ratio to be good and balanced. So you're not, you know, just looking fat. <laughs> so, um, you know, and then we'll, we'll get into this because we ended up dieting John down to past a certain point. But the point is that, you know, we were able to make those adjustments because John was so diligent in following through. So with that said, that long winded brings me to my next question is John, what made you so successful in following through? Like what was the, the driving force behind you being so successful nutrition wise? Cause like I tell everybody, the exercise portion of it is easy. You come to the gym a couple of days a week, you do it. Even if you don't want to, you just show up. And then as soon as you leave, it's done. But you know, the nutrition is 24, seven, 365. You know, you're always faced with a, a choice of, you know, eating Dairy Queen or, you know, eating Rocky Road from somewhere else. But in that case, John, what has made you so successful when it comes to the nutrition? What was your, what was the approach that you have taken to actually achieve the level of success that you have? Yeah, I think it's more so the fact that I'm, I'm only in the gym for an hour and a half a week. So I know that I'm out of the gym a lot more than I'm in it. And when I'm in the gym, I like to think at least that I work pretty hard. So I work yeah, hard do, in do. the gym and I want to see results. So why am I working this hard if I'm not going to follow the meal plan is how I have that mentality. So I'm going to work my ass off for an hour and a half in the gym, but then eat whatever I want, cancel out all those gains and results that I could have seen for what I just didn't really see the necessity of doing that. And especially if I have a calorie allotment, I can still eat the foods I want. I just have to allot those calories for it. So I'm able to still eat that ice cream if I want to. I could go to Dairy Queen if I really want to. I could still hit all my macros. So why would I just start binge eating and eating everything in the pantry if I could still eat whatever I want and still see results in the process? Yeah, it's funny. I actually, um, I went live on Facebook before. I did like a little seminar. Uh, someone had posted something. I saw it somewhere on Facebook. They said, said like, um, oh, you can't drink and make progress and still lose fat and gain muscle. So I literally went on live. I took tequila. I was what I had in my house. I took tequila, an unopened bottle of tequila because I don't drink. And I took a sun, um, whatever, orange juice. Cause that's what I had in my house. I made myself a drink and I literally drank on Facebook before. <laughs> so yeah. it was funny because I just wanted to prove my point, but everyone was blown away. Dude, I've been doing videos since this whole quarantine thing. I've been doing a seminar every night, pretty much. And the amount of people that were on there tonight that watched me drink, it was like mind blowing. Like the numbers are like so skewed. It's like everybody wanted to watch me drink because I'm not a drinker, but it's just, I just did it just to prove a point that you can still 
you know, do these things that you want and still lose and make pro lose body fat and make progress. So now when you first started, I know one of the things you had told me was you didn't think that it was possible for you to actually gain as much muscle as you wanted. Um, so now here, here it comes fast forward a couple months down the line and you're, you're putting on all this muscle. You, you know, you've gained so much strength. Talk about that experience. Like how did that actually feel for you? Because I can relate to that because I was a really skinny kid growing up, but how could that, how does that like, how did that feel for you when you actually started? Like, you know, you, you put your shirt on, you're like, Hey, what is all this? So the beginning was a little rough. Like I'll be honest, I had those, those shoulder surgeries. So like you said, when I started off, I was really, really weak. So it was discouraging in the beginning just to see exactly how weak I was and the limitations I did have. But slowly, week by week, I just stayed patient, stuck with the process, listened to whatever you were adjust. You would adjust all my workouts accordingly. And I'd listen to you rested in the off days. And slowly, I started to build up that strength. And once it started to really start building up and I started to see the results, then it just became... Uh, addicting you just keep wanting to go back you want to see more results you want to keep working harder and uh, keep increasing those goals. so the beginning was rough but once you get over that hump then uh, it becomes addicting yeah so now we bulk john up to a certain point we're like all right john i think you put on enough muscle but now i think you know at this point you're carrying a little too much body fat so now we're entering where most people enter is where they they have to lose some body fat so Talk about that experience from start to finish. I'm going to let you, you know, divulge in that. So we determined, okay, John, at this point, you're too fat, buddy. <laughs> you, you're no longer, you no longer lean and putting on muscle. You're just, you're putting on too much fat, which is normal. It, it happens when you're trying to gain weight. People think, you know, gaining weight is a lot easier, but I'd rather diet any day than gain weight because it's 10 times harder. But so talk about that experience. So I turn around and I tell you that what, what was going through your mind? Uh, it wasn't that bad. At that point, when I was bulking up, I was eating so many calories, it was becoming too filling. So I felt like I was full all the time. And it was be actually becoming a grind to hit those calories. Um, what helped was, like you said before, I was staying consistent with the meal plan. So pretty much every week, I knew exact that I was hitting exactly those amount of calories, exactly that much protein. So if we had to bump it up 100 calories, and I saw my body fat going up, I knew it was a direct result of those 100 calories and nothing else uh, with my lifestyle or how I'm eating or anything like that. Um, so once we started to cut down, it was just a matter you still make fun of me about my 100 calorie snack packs that I eat. I just removed a few of those 100 calorie snack packs out each week. And then you st I started to see the body fat go down. So it's almost more relieving than anything else to finally not feel so full and feel like I'm stuffing my face all the time. Yeah. And I think that that's the thing that most people forget is like when you put on this amount of muscle mass, you know, when you diet back down, it's not like you're just losing weight. You're actually losing the fat there, but the muscle still staying that you've built. So John's essentially getting leaner, which is what most people do. So John, nutrition wise, and this is, you gave away your secret. You said it a little ahead of time, your snack pack. So I do make fun of John for his snack packs, but John has literally simplified the whole dieting process for himself. And I, it's complete genius. When he told me that he was doing this, I was so like blown away how simple it was. So John, explain it. You, you can kind of go in depth because I think that, that that alone is the golden nugget of this episode, just how simple you made the nutritional plan. So, so go ahead. I want, I want everyone to hear from you what you did. So the hardest thing, uh, as most people are finding, is to actually hit your protein macros. So getting that down and in your calorie allotment usually is pretty tough because these things are either very high in fat or very calorie dense usually, um, or sometimes if you're eating egg whites, it's not enough calories. So you're having a lot of protein, not too many calories. So it's a struggle to find that balance. So once I found that balance of how much protein, how much fat, how much carbs to eat within my calorie allotment, um, if you ever bumped it up a uh, hundred calories, which we were doing almost every other week or every month, all I would do is I'd keep my meal plan exactly the same as in the past, but I'd add a hundred calorie snack pack to it. So whether it was a skinny pop, popcorn, Cheez-Its, whatever it was, it was just a hundred calories of almonds. Um, I would just add that to it. So my protein goals were staying the same. Everything else was pretty much staying the same. I just increased a little bit of fat or a little bit of carbs and that was it. Um, and then so if I ever had to strip down weight, I'd cut those out. So what did a typical day of eating look like for you when you were gaining weight? And what did a typical day of eating look like when you were dieting down? So when I was gaining weight, it was my main meals, uh, whether it be a bunch of eggs, egg whites, um, some chicken, um, pasta, things of that nature. Uh, pasta. I'd have, you can't eat pasta. 
I put a bunch of meat sauce on it. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only way to eat pasta. <laughs> it is. So I had my meat sauce with the pasta and it was lean meat, 92%. Um, so I'd cook that in with the sauce and put that over the pasta. Um, I do pretty much, uh, I'd have a few uh, protein bars, protein powder. Uh, then uh, I'd have a lot of snacks to make the difference in those calories. So if I was, I was eating, I think close to 4,000 calories or 3,500, I think Very at one close, point. Yeah. Um, so it was a ton of these 100 calorie snack packs. It was bags of chips. It was almonds. It was, you name whatever snack it was, I was probably eating it. Um, so everybody's I started, like, yeah, but he wants to put on weight. So of course he could eat that stuff. Yeah, but I, the struggle was actually make sure that the fat content was low because some of these right. bags of chips, you're getting 10 grams for 160 calories in those bags of chips. Yep. Not too ideal. So I was trying to find these low fat and or healthy fat snacks. Um, that were. And then what did it look like when you dieted down? I pretty much cut out just those 100 calorie snacks and I kept everything else the same. So it was still the eggs, the egg whites, chicken, whatever meat or protein source I was having just none of those snacks really in between. But I will say I maintained my diet of having Ralph's almost every day. So I was eating Ralph's Italian ice still every day. But uh, that was the one sacrifice I would make, but I made sure I still hit my calories with it in there. Yeah, I mean, I think it's complete genius. He really simplified the whole thing. He said, okay, I'm hitting my protein, so now I just got to hit my carbs and my fat, and I'll just use these, you know, these 100-calorie pa snack packs. And his literally, we make fun of him that his lunch is like Lunchables. That's exactly what his lunch is, except he puts his own protein in it. But it's what keeps him sustainable. It's what keeps him going. It's what keeps him, makes it easy. And that's the one thing that I tell everybody all the time is, you know, this has to be easy. Uh, John, what, I'm, I'm just curious because I, I never, I don't think I've ever asked you this question, but um, what diet did you ever follow before this? I might have asked you. I don't remember off my head if you did anything. None. Nothing. I really didn't follow any diet. There was really no rhyme or reason. If I was hungry and I wanted an egg sandwich, I'd eat it. If I'd didn't want breakfast that day. I just wouldn't eat breakfast at all together. Um, and the only time I would really take a scoop of protein would be if I worked out after a workout, but I was only taking one scoop um, then. And I didn't know how much protein I was having. Sometimes at lunch, I'd have a little uh, uncrustable PB and J sandwich. And that was it. That was my lunch. Uh, so there's not much protein in that, even though people think there's a lot of protein in peanut butter, there's really not that much. Um, so yeah, I was having a fat. So I wasn't having much protein at all. And some days, I, as you, we found out when we were estimating how much calories I actually had, I was probably eating close to 1,500 calories, if not less. Yeah. Okay. And I thought I was eating over 2,000. So I really had no clue. It's funny, you know, it's, and what I've noticed, the people who come to me who want to gain weight, they over, always overestimate how many calories they're taking in. So you did it. You said you were having close to 2,000. You thought when we looked back, it was like 1,500 or less. And then I have people who, you know, come to me who want to lose weight and they over always, always say, okay, I'm only having this. And they having triple the amount. You know, I had one lady, oh, I probably have like 800 calories a day. And when I actually calculated it in front of her, it was close to 3000 a day. Wow. Yeah. yeah and one thing I do is if I do eat out um, and I'm not sure what the nutritional value is of the food that I'm eating, I always do actually try to overestimate instead of underestimating because I feel at least I'll put on less fat if I overestimate. If I, I mean, underestimate. So if I'm saying that this meal is 800 calories when really it could be 600, at least I'm saving that instead of risking the fact that it's a thousand calories and now I'm going to put on just pure fat. For me. Right. John, you're the man, man. I mean, just your success. Like I said, John has two transformations. Well, first and foremost, I mean, I could attest to this because that's where I came from, but it's not easy to bulk up and put on actual muscle. You know, you can bulk up and get fat easily, but then to, to bulk up, to put on as much muscle as you did, get as strong as you did, and then diet down back to the original body fat level that you were while maintaining all that muscle mass and retaining that strength while living life. I mean, you know, that's the other thing too, is a lot of people think that you have to be a hermit to do that, but this guy's a working professional. He probably works about 90 hours a week. Uh, you know, he's got a girlfriend, he has his own house, he's got his own things that he has to take care of. And it's just like, you know, you still get it done and it's part of your life now, right? Yeah, the beginning, the meal plan, trying to f find a meal plan that I enjoyed and that hit all my macros, it was a little tough, I won't lie, the first month or so of trying to track every calorie I was intaking was a little tough, but once I got the hang of it, honestly, there, it's not that much uh, harder than what I was doing before. 
it almost comes second nature and it really doesn't take much thought, especially with those hundred calorie packs, it takes the thought process out of it. It's, it doesn't interrupt any daily cycle or lifestyle or anything like that. Um, and then because I'm only in the gym a half hour, three times a week, it's only an hour and a half commitment a week. It's really not that bad. And it's definitely easy to maintain. Right. John, so now it's over a year that you've been coming. You, you have two transformation photos going on three, right? As soon as we get back from all this crazy stuff, we got to, we got to finalize the third one, but you got to update Photoshop. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, at this point, some people are like, Oh, but you know, they'll see your picture and they're like, Oh, this guy, won you won already, but what are you still going? They have to just, just stop everything. So, <laughs> cause people think like that, actually, I'm not even lying. Like somebody actually turned around and told Pete that, you know, you won already people. Oh, I think you cut out. Are you there? Are you there? Are you cut yeah, out? You hear me? Yeah, now I can. Sorry, I lost you. Did you hear my question? <laughs> What's up? Did you hear my question? I heard somebody said something to Pete about yeah, you. Yeah, so someone, someone says, yeah, someone said something. Sorry, man. <laughs> my internet. I guess they didn't pay the bill. Someone said to Pete one day, you know, Pete, you won. Why are you even bothering working out at this point anymore? Because Pete looks good. So it's, um, and people think like that. People have that rationale behind, okay, you got there. So what else is there to achieve? So what keeps you coming and what keeps you coming to get coaching from us? Seeing the results is just addicting. I enjoy seeing these results. I enjoy working out. I find it a challenge. It's not only physically challenging, it's mentally challenging as well to try to push yourself to be better each time and to improve constantly. Uh, I just enjoy challenging myself and trying to see and get the most out of these results. Uh, and one of the biggest things also, I think, is after the surgeries, I was told I would have limitations. I wouldn't be able to shoulder press for at least three years, if at all. Um, with you, I pretty much started shoulder pressing a month after. Um, I like to prove people wrong. I like to do things that I want to do and do it on my agenda. Not, and don't let anybody else tell me what I can and can't do. So I feel like I have a lot to prove and I want to accomplish these things. I still have these goals in mind. And I want to get better constantly and uh, see better results each time. So John's really modest guys listening to this. You just guys really modest. So we had a contest in the gym to see, you know, who could do what John won the whole thing clearly. Um, but John planked, he actually didn't win this. So I, I, I gotta, <laughs> I gotta, I gotta bust his chops out. He actually didn't win this, but we had a plank contest and he held it for 15 minutes, guys, a 15 minute plank. He didn't win. He didn't win by it one was, second. <laughs> yeah, he lost by one second, but still, guys, 15 minutes. So this guy, when he came in, he couldn't do – I'm not even lying to you. He probably couldn't do, have done a minute at that point. Maybe a minute. I'll give him a little credit. He probably could have done at least a minute. But uh, between the pain from his shoulder and just not being as strong as he is now, uh, you know, I'm super proud of him. I'm just super proud of all of his accomplishments. And, you know, I have one more question for you, John, is that what are your goals going forward? Like you mentioned that you had goals that you wanted to hit. So – what are they? I'm, you know, I'm sure people listening to this who are going to want to see the other transformation picture want to know what, what are those goals? Yeah. Like you said, I'm a typical meathead. So I just want to put on more muscle and get bigger. <laughs> <laughs> what would be an ultimate goal for you? Uh, honestly, I like to see my body fat maybe close to uh, uh, it is close to single digits right now. So I'd want to maintain a single digit or close to a body fat and up my body weight, probably another 15, 20 pounds, ideally. Um, so I want to put on 15 to 20 more pounds of muscle, ideally. And I don't know anybody else who could do it like this guy can. All you got to do is just up those snack packs, man. That's it. <laughs> That's it. And Dairy Queen. <laughs> yeah, and Dairy Queen. Yeah, you, have, you literally have, do you have Dairy Queen? Well, not now, but do you have like ice cream every day pretty much? Right before the quarantine, yeah. I was going to Dairy Queen every day for two months straight, I think. <laughs> so, and it was still hitting all my macros and it was a nice little delicious treat for me. Still making progress. Good job. Well, I'm so proud of you, buddy. Uh, like I said, I, I always sing your praises because, again, I, like I said, your picture's in the gym all the time, and I'm always showing people, like, you know, that's John. He has two transformations. So it's awesome just to get this on film and just to kind of inspire other people who may have been in the same shoes you are or even someone who's just struggling with the nutrition that just needs to hear, you know, that success is possible because, you know, not everybody thinks so. And especially people who have come from other backgrounds, like you did CrossFit for a long time. It's a long time and you didn't really see the, the progress and the results that you wanted. So, John, I'm just I'm always super proud of you and I love to see you, you know, expand in the gym and out. So I'm super, just super proud of you. And uh, I'm honored to be, you know, your trainer, your friend. You know, I hope at this point I could say you're my buddy, right? 
Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> but one thing I would like to say is it's easy to get discouraged. And this whole process is a pretty slow process. You're not going to see results overnight, regardless of if you're sticking to your meal plan every day or not, regardless of if you're in the gym one day a week or seven days a week you're never going to see results overnight. It's not something like in the commercials where in a month they're absolutely shredded and they lost a hundred pounds. That's just not realistic and not sustainable. Um, and there are times like even for me, every once in a while I go through those plateaus where I hit, where I'm getting discouraged. I can't lift enough. I'm not increasing my weight. I'm struggling to hit macros or whatever it may be. And it becomes a little discouraging, but you just have to trust the process, realize that it's a slow and steady course and everything will eventually work its way out. And, you'll get out of whatever that rut may have been at that time and you'll end up becoming better. So you just stick with it, trust the process and eventually you'll start seeing those results that you wanted. And you know, sometimes you don't, and I, I don't think that that's a bad thing. You know, when you get past a certain point with this, I mean, we're talking a little bit down the line, but when you get more advanced with this, you know, the ruts come a lot sooner. Um, they definitely last a lot longer, but they're always learning. You could always learn from them. And I think that's the key. And that's the, that's the trick behind making this really like getting to where you want to go and getting to those next level of results is just understanding that it is a process and it doesn't happen overnight and it's never going to go your way. Yeah. You're and constantly... it's a lot of trial and error. Yeah. You, you might think something's going to work great for you and it, that just doesn't work great for you, but it might work great for everybody else. Then you have to try something else that works for you and maybe not anybody else. And now you end up doing better than they are. So it's all Agreed. about trial and error, just trusting the process and sticking with it. Agreed, man. Agreed. Well, Johnny, thank you so much for coming on, bud. I really appreciate it. Like I said, I'm just so proud of you. And, uh, no and problem. Thank everything, you. Buddy. Thank no you, problem, friend. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look, I, I made that category. <laughs> all right, guys. Guys, visit abfitnesscenter.com if you're interested in getting started. Thanks for listening.